Hi folks and a welcome to another video this is another dance set it's another one of Phil's um, so let's move some stuff out of the way move that yellow 84 out of the way there's a broken one there's two of them on here because I put a really good strong one in Phil's the broken one and all I need to keep my eye out for that so I can go in the bin uh, just turn this beautiful old record play around and this has got a nice patina to be honest the handle's a bit trash but that's all part of its characters this is nice unrestored and dare I say unmolested it's a nice example it'll clean up well uh, the aim is not to restore it but you know, I will tidy it where I can uh, the aim is to repair it really but if I can smarten it up a bit while it's apart I will do right are we ready for the reveal of the deck just turn it back around again. What, what have we got in here? I honestly don't know. Uh, is it a Garad? Is it a BSR? Is it a Calaro? Because to be perfectly honest, I can't remember what they put in this thing. I would say it's probably a UA8. Uh, I don't think they put an Auto Slim in these. But there again, it could even be a Calaro. It could even be something older because this is mid 50s. So, let's have a shufty, shall we? It's a UA8. How about that then? And look at this. This is absolutely, this is a dance set major. I thought it was a junior. It's a major. Right. And look at this, folks. You haven't, pl you haven't even plugged this in, have you, Phil? <laughs> if you did you plugged it in with your tea light uh, do you know something it's almost a shame to take this off but I'm going to because I'm taking the whole lead off and the first thing we'll do we'll switch the oh it's got a brown cartridge in which means it's got a decent amp uh, which means it'll take uh, if it has to uh, it'll take my uh, my rebuilt orange Crosley because it's got the right cartridge uh, carrier in it. So slide the cartridge out to begin with. I'm not going to power it up because I don't know when it was last powered up. So I want to check things first. The first thing I'm going to do. Jesus. If I can get them off. <laughs> I'm going to check the cartridge. So what we'll do, we'll have the, we'll have the signal tracer warming up. And I will put in an effort to get the cartridge off without, this is the original cartridge folks, I really hope it's working, I hope it really do because there, there's the generator, the tracer warming up. There, I managed to get them off without breaking them, without pulling them off the wires. Oops, I pulled, oh, I pulled his little condom off the armrest, I pulled the little condom off. Scraps! Ooh, that's a bit stiff but then again we've got some work to do Let's slide that little rubber oh, it's, it's actually split there we go it's actually split so what I'll probably do I'll probably replace that with a piece of heat shrink or something wow that's a tight wow the only thing I know tighter than that is my mate Wobby's wallet I'll probably replace that with a piece of heat shrink or something. Uh, it can't stay original all its life. Right, so what we'll do, we'll test the cartridge with the signal signal tracer. Get them pliers off it. Uh, get off. Right, I hope this cartridge works actually because it'd be nice to put the original back, but because this is a brown cartridge, it's a medium sensitive one, which means it's probably got a decent amp in this. Uh, mind you, that's one I've just done. The amp's not bad in it. Are we ready? Is it dead or is it alive? Fuck me. Let's turn it right up. That's the, that's the signal tracer full up. That 
say that's a good cartridge. It's alive! It's alive! Right, and I'll say that's good for now. But we'll see how we go and we'll put it back in the record player. So we'll put that save. And I've got some new stylus for this as well. You'll have to have an LP on either side though, because I've got no 78 RPM ones. So I'll stick them to, I'll, I'll turn it into a double LP. Right. So, first things first. You knew it, didn't you, folks? What we're going to do, what we're going to do, we're going to do an overview on this. Right, let's check the automatic mechanism, see if that works. Just see if it switches off. And it does. Does the speed change? No. The speed doesn't change. Uh, and you can't force these because if you do you break the knobs. And it'd be a shame because all the writing's on the knobs and everything. I mean, it's a shame there's no mat on this actually. Uh, haven't got a mat to fit it either. Uh, which is a shame really because this is a really this is gonna make a really nice gonna make a really nice old record player for him. I mean what his plan are, what he was telling me what his plan is. His plan is to collect every every model dance set, but I told him to avoid the ones from the very, very late sixties. Because they were made by rank by rank. They were made by the rank organisation, they weren't real dance sets, the late 60s ones. They were made by JR for rank. Hang on. Oh, just clean your colon. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do a service on the BSR UA8 because I've done a service on the UA8 you've seen me do that and you know depending on what's wrong with this it depends how much of a service I do I'm not a service it depends on how much a video I do on it to be honest because let's take the screws all the way out so they don't get lost I was going to leave them in, but I'll take them all the way out. Right, so we'll do the full inspection of this together. I mean, this probably, I mean, this, this thing probably even works. I mean, I, I think it's an EL84 that's in this. And this is a really, really old one. It's a plus a gram house one before they even went to, before they even renamed the place to Danset House. Uh, Danset, Dan, Danset Major. For AC mains manufacturer, because back then you could get AC and DC mains. Uh, certain parts of the country ran AC and other parts of the country ran DC. So if you were in a DC area and you wanted one of these, you were shite or out of luck. You had to go for something else. Probably something more fucking lethal than all, like one of those things that don't have a transformer. I don't really like them, and to be honest... Um, you know, I'd scrap them all if I could, but you can't scrap other people's uh, belongings, I'm afraid. But yeah, them them series ones with uh, them ones with the series, ser them ones with the series valve eaters and the main and uh, no no power transformer in them. One side connect one side of the mains directly connected to uh, to the chassis. Giving you a live chassis. No, I'd, I'd scrap all them if I could. I'd get every single one and scrap them if I could. But you know, I mean, they can be made safe-ish. I mean, uh, I did a dance set popular, and there's a series of videos on the popular that I did, and uh, I feel like I can even find the screws by feel. I've been in that many of these things. You know, 
I expect to find dead spiders, old styluses and God knows what else in this. But this is a lovely example I think for its age. This is, this this is a sort of record player that I wouldn't restore. Uh, I would clean it, but only lightly clean it because it's got it's got a nice. We'll leave that one. I can't get my fingers down there because I've got sausages, not fingers. You see, I've got big fat fingers. But we we'll get that get to get to get that when I lift the motorboard and everything. They set all assembly out. Yeah, this is uh, this basically shares the amp. This should really be a very similar amp uh, to the one I've just done. So it's probably why that one performs so well with that GP ninety one cartridge in it, uh, because it does it perform. You know, you're getting quite a good bit of volume out, even on. Uh, fairly quiet records you're still getting you know full volume is still too much so I think so so you know uh, you're still getting uh, you got to be careful here because don't want to break anything the idea is not to force anything not to break anything there we are look at that I wonder if I find a mouse nest oh no this is a different amplifier to the uh, the other one yeah this is a different have I turned the soldering iron on no I have not see we're all organized here at vintage electronics repair yeah I've acquired a new nickname by the way uh, I'm not sure of his name but the guy with an icon as a volume as a as a as a bov as a as a, as a jar of bovril he nicknamed me Dr. Deck I don't mind don't bother me that quite actually I'm quite uh... there we go oh this is this is a, no this is not an ELA uh, is it I'll tell you what you can tell this is early folks you can tell this is early we'll get into that in a minute yeah he is even a knot hole in the wood they wasted full call did they even a knot hole in the wood, but this is actually quite well made, this one, and it's not falling to bits like the other one. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll feed the power cable through. We're not going to plug it in yet, because I don't do that, as you know. Uh, I don't plug them straight in. I service them, check the capacitors and stuff, because God knows when this last saw power. So it won't be seen any yet. And the lead will be getting replaced. If we can ever cut through it, there we go. Just cut the lead, just cut the lead off. There we go, and just cut that off because there we are. Because we're we're replacing it anyway, so we'll just chop the lead off. Yeah, this is a nice old, nice old lady. This it's got a metal rectifier. Uh, it's basically they basically a very very similar amp. It's the earlier amp to the one I've just repaired. The one I've just done the tempo has the later amp in it. This is the early one. And it's got an unusual valve holder. And... If you're ever unsure on how to gauge the age of a record player, uh, the EL84 came out in 1954 or 55, I believe. So if it's an EL84, it's mid-50s. It's not early 50s if it's an EL84, because there were no EL84s back then. So what we'll do, we'll take... Has the iron got hot enough? Yeah, that's alive. And they've only put two wires in this. That's a negative. 
and uh, I must remember that they are the output they're not shielded must remember that they are the output you go straight to the volume control um, your motor for your deck comes up here to your on off switch there we go don't matter if the rest of the wires fall off because I know what I'm doing so right that's the my solder just bit the dust where have you gone there we go this UA8 doesn't even need stripping I mean it's I bet the grease is not even that look at that even the grease is still wet but I will clean it and re-grease it for the purpose of doing so and I will sort the speed selector mechanism out that needs to be done uh, what well, the automatic yeah that's all okay but it will be getting clean in grease. Now if I move the deck, just put the deck and the motor board out of the way for a few minutes. Uh, we'll have a look at the amplifier in this lovely old lady. Just put that there for a few minutes. I'll move that in a bit. Right, what have we got in here? Well there's part of the rubber mat. Uh, this needs a clean out. Uh, we've got a speaker, obviously. It's always good to have that. And look at the way this is made. This is actually one of the de more decent ones. See so if we can get this. I'm not even sure how that comes off. I'm... How does that bloody valve holder come off? It looks like it slides up, but... It hooks under the valve. It comes down, hooks under, and this ring goes down and holds it tight. That EL84 looks pretty good actually. It's got to come out for me to check things. Yeah, yes. I don't want to break it. Yeah, it is an EL84. I don't want to break the freaking valve. I mean, I've got another one, but. I mean, why waste one if you don't have to? You've got little nobbles on there which you've got to get this ring past. Wow. If I press on that, I'm going to break the glass. Yeah. It's got to come out. Do you want to get anything? See if I see anything that way? Yeah. I wonder. Wonder if you just right. right. Well, this is only an overview anyway. Uh, the handle leaves a bit, you know, but that's part of it, isn't it? But the grill's in nice condition, I can't see any cracks or breaks, probably a brittle as hell. Uh, so I'm going to clean it on the record player and I'm going to attempt to remove it. Uh, I'm going to get the J. Edgar, hoover all this out. Uh, the amp's got to come out, that valve at some point has got to come out. And this is all, this is all riveted to here, you know, this is all one assembly. So, you know, it's... Hopefully there's no screws in the bottom, it's just two in the top here. So I won't pull it out yet. And we've got the 
rectifier there, which is your goes onto your goes onto your onto your anode. Yeah, this is got this valve's got to come out, but I mean they made sure that wasn't going to fall out, didn't they? This is probably this is one of the properly made ones. Not like the rubbish that started churning out later. You know, if they put a Gallard Auto Slim in this, if they if they if they have had one, is that a woodworm? No, a bit of shit. Thought it was woodworm. It's not. This is in my. I can't believe. Do you know? I'm be, I'm beginning to hope there's nothing wrong with this, uh, because it'd be nice to leave it exactly as is. It's a lovely old. I mean, there's only unless you count the uh, yeah EL84. It's got it stamped on the chassis even. Yeah, there's only two resistors in the circuit apart from the potentiometers they make four. So we could say if you count the potentiometers, you only got two resistors, and uh, four capa uh, five uh, four. Four capacitors because there's probably three in that can and one here for the tone, and that's a paper one, so that'll be replaced if I've got the value. If I haven't, I'll have to order the value because it'll still be getting replaced. But uh, yeah, this is going to be a nice one to work on once I get that bloody valve out. I mean, if I break the valve, I break the valve. I'm going to try my best not to because I don't want to use one if I don't have to. Because uh, looking at this thing, I've got a feeling that this thing's probably in good condition. I reckon this would probably play a record if I plugged it in, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm trying to look for a date. We've got some writing there, but... It's signed! This is signed. This has got some woman's name written in it. Whoever assembled, whoever assembled the amplifier... She was called Anita. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. Wow, it's the first time I've seen that. I've found a few dates and stuff in them, but I've never found I've never found a name in one. I, I want to try and zoom in on it if I can. Where is, whereabouts is it? Just there. Let's see if we can zoom in. Probably won't be able to, but we'll try. There you are. Can you see it there? Where's my fingers? On the end of my hand. There, look, just there. Anita. Well, how about that? She actually wrote her name on the chassis. I'll be careful to make sure I don't remove that. It's probably written in pencil. I mean, I think I've just. There you are. Anita. Wow. Wow, fancy that, eh, folks? It's the first time I've ever found a dance set signed inside. It's a shame it didn't have a last name in there, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I mean, when she made, when she, I mean, when she put this chassis together, she was probably, she was probably a fresh kid out of school or something. And, uh, you know, she's probably not even with us anymore. But you never know, she might be out there somewhere. She might even watch this video and say, yeah, and think to herself, well, yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember working for them and putting that together. But the amplifiers, as I've already said, they weren't actually made by Danset. They were actually bought in. Uh, need to try and get these knobs off. Just try and do this before I go. If I can't get them off, it's going to be an issue because they need to come off. But the point is, I don't want to bloody break the damn things. They're good original knobs. Uh, so I'm going to use my technique of two screwdrivers uh, behind them and try and just jiggle them off. If I can't get them off, I'll have to try and service it in situ, and that's going to be difficult. This is all riveted, this, to get to. To get the smoothing capacitor out, you've got to take the transformer out because this board is riveted. It's, you know, it's good and stiff, and you know, it's got some woman's name in there. And you know, how about that? 
No. I'm going to just try and pull them. Where's my long screwdriver? I mean, people say put a piece of string around them and shit like that, but it doesn't always work. Is there no, no, no little, little screws in them, is there? No. They've just been on there all them fucking years. Oh, it'd be a shame. It's not moving that. I might have to service this with the, knob, with the knobs in place. And how the fuck am I going to get 10 capacitors? Because I can get the transformer out. I can get the transformer out using the nut spinner. It's going to be awkward. But I can service it with the knobs in place. I'd rather have it on the bench. Let's try getting the tone knob off. If I get the tone one off, I'll work on the volume one. But... No, they ain't gonna come. They're not gonna move. No, they're on there. So it looks like, because I can't get, I can't, the amplifier, the amplifier is riveted to this uh, this has never been touched in all the years you know it's ne no one's ever had the knobs off this since they were slid on there and I can't heat them up because they're plastic I mean I can't heat the shafts up because I can't get to the bloody shafts and I don't want to do that anyway Problems, problems, eh, folks? Problems, problems. Leave it with me. Right, I'm going to end this one here. We've had a look at it. We've, uh, you know, we've had a bit of excitement over finding somebody's name in it. Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen that. Uh, she was probably proud of her work, and you don't know, she might have signed every single one that she built. You know, she might have been the only one that built them with any quality in them. You know, she might have been the only one that built them properly. Because it does look okay. I mean, to service it, I'm going to have to take the transformer out, I think, because I'm not, I'm not, I just know I'm not going to get those knobs off and I can get, I can get cleaner into the knobs. So it's not essential that I remove them as long as the knobs are not bad. As long as the controls are okay. And, the, you know, there's no reason why, but... There's no, I noticed, I noticed as well there's no lamp in this one to tell you that it's on. It's probably why they hummed. But I do want to replace the power cord in this with a free core uh, 30 pound, <laughs> 30 pound Danset upgrade power cord. I do want to put a new, a new, a new upgrade, Danset upgrade power cord in. I do want to put a new power cord in. A free core power cord and earth the deck. Uh, anyway, I'm going to end it here for now, folks. I'll upload this and uh, uh, it'll give Phil some entertainment for tonight. And I'll try and leave that girl's name in there. And I'll, I'll try and not disturb her. Because it's part of his history. And to be honest, this is one of the nicer ones I've seen. It's a good old original. It's not been messed with. Until I've got hold of it. Anyway, you all take care. Catch you later, folks. Well, this is part one, by the way, of the dance set major. Hey, folks, just a quick update for you. I've got the knobs off, and guess what? I didn't smash them. So we'll put them in there with the rest of it. So now it's ready to be serviced. And yeah, it's even got the original. Old dance set in scrolling letters in they were made, I think they were made out of brass or <coughs> some sort of uh, you know yeah some sort of metal. I got it off and I never broke the grill. 
and I never broke the knobs. So what I did, I ran a bit of oil down and just left them for a few minutes and it just pulled off. With a bit of help with the screwdrivers, I got them off and there's no damage. And yeah, uh, I just thought I'd add that little update, folks.